and welcome back to the Bayou. Today we're going to do a deep dive into The Conjuring 3 and the story behind it. The Devil Made Me Do It. So I wanted to know all the facts and all the details about The Devil Made Me Do It and the story that's coming out of The Conjuring 3 before the movie hits. And I went on YouTube and there didn't seem to really be anything out there. So I figured that there would be other people out there like you guys who would be interested in this too and that I would do the research and you guys could just sit back and enjoy the story. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now the story starts in 1980 with a boy named David Gatzel. Now David lived in Brookfield, Connecticut. David was only 11 years old and he had an older sister named Debbie. Debbie was 18, 19 years old and she was engaged to a man named Arnie Johnson. Now, everything seemed to be going great. Debbie was going to get married, and Arnie was fixing to move into the house. And when he did move into the house, shortly after that, he moved in with Debbie and her little brother David, as well as the family. About a month after, things started getting really strange. David started acting really weird and odd. He actually had started having visions. He started getting scratches, convulsions. He started levitating, like actually levitating. His body began to contort in really weird ways. He was seen, like I said, multiple times levitating, just really acting strange. He gained 60 pounds pretty fast. And we're talking all this within a month, maybe two months. And one thing that was really creepy is that David, little David, he predicted that Arnie, who was a really nice, easygoing guy, really cared about the family, not a mean bone in his body from everything that I've read, that he was going to kill Debbie's boss, who actually happened to also be their landlord. And the boss's name is Alan Bono. So the whole family was freaking out about David. You know, you see your son levitating, you see him getting scratches appearing on his body. I mean, all this crazy stuff. So what do you think? You think demonic possession, right? So where do they turn? The first place that they turn is the Catholic Church. And, the, you know, they get all the evidence and the proof. They take it to the priest. And the priest decides that he's going to come over and do a house blessing on the house and do a blessing on David. So the priest comes over, does all that, and nothing happened. Nothing happened at all. Nothing changed. David was still being tortured by this demon or multiple demons that were inside of him. And that's where Ed and Lorraine get involved in this story. Now, Ed and Lorraine Warren are known for being demonologists. And that's what they do is they help the church out, they go out, they perform exorcisms, and get rid of demons, right? You've seen, if you've seen The Conjuring 1 and 2, uh, you know that that's their stories. Of course, they're overdone for Hollywood, of course, purposes, but those are their stories of hunting demons and, and their escapades, I guess you could say, for lack of a better term. But Ed and Lorraine get involved in this story because David is, according to the church, clearly showing signs of possession. Now, Ed, who is a self-proclaimed demonologist, he goes out and he performs four minor rites of exorcism on David. And, you know, things get crazy. The scratching gets worse. The, the levitating, the pain that David's going through, everything just intensifies while they're doing these exorcisms. And Arnie is there at the time. Remember Debbie's fiance? Arnie is there at the time. And he says, quote, take me on, leave my little buddy alone, and is challenging these demons to just take him and leave poor David because David's only 11 years old. So he does this, and Ed says that's where he made the biggest mistake of his life because there wasn't only one demon that Ed said living in David's body. There were actually 43. And when Arnie said, take me on, witnesses that were there watching the Ed reform these rites of exorcism say that they actually saw the demons leaving from David's body and going and entering into Arnie's body. First of all, this is where the research gets a little crazy. What I guess I have to stop because I didn't understand here. This is going to sound strange and maybe, you know, leave in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this too. But if there's witnesses that say that they saw the demons go from one person to another, then why didn't they perform an exorcism on Arnie 
and, or well, really, why was Arnie even there? But then why did they not perform an exorcism on Arnie? Because they didn't. They just left things alone. Now David is cured. Everything's fine with David. Everything's good with him. And they leave? And leave things be? Even though witnesses saw this happen? I don't know. Sounds really strange to me. I couldn't figure that part out. Maybe if you guys found some details about it that I didn't, you can let me know in the comments below. But they do leave. And like I said, David, he's cured. So things seem to be getting back to normal. And Arnie seems to be acting fine at first. He seems to be doing okay. Until he's not. And Debbie would actually later say that, quote, Arnie would go into a trance. And he would, quote, growl and say he saw the beast and later he would have no memory of it whatsoever. It was just, she said it was just like David. And one thing that David actually said, which I thought was kind of crazy, when David was possessed with this beast, David said, quote, that he saw a man with big black eyes, a thin face with animal features, and jagged teeth, pointed ears, horns and hoofs. So this is the beast that supposedly Arnie is now seeing and that Arnie is possessed with. So I don't know if there's one beast, 43 bees, that gets a little fishy too. But that's the main one that was bothering David and then is now bothering Arnie. Not every day is crazy and not every day Arnie's acting strange. You know, he's still living with the family. Things still seem to be going okay. I guess they're overlooking the growling whatever. But anyway, one day Debbie's boss decides to invite his other workers as well as Debbie and he invites Arnie as well as Debbie has a little cousin, Mary, who's nine years old. And he invites all of them out to lunch and they were all just going to go have a great lunch. Everything was going to be fine. Just like an employee luncheon type thing. The only problem with this is that Alan gets drunk while he's out there. Remember Alan Bono? He's the boss. But he gets drunk while they're having this lunch. And it said that he inappropriately, in ways that were not okay to grab a nine-year-old, but that he grabbed onto Mary and that he would not let Mary go. And he thought that this was funny. And Arnie, at that time, Arnie just snapped. That's where our story goes a little crazy. So remember at the beginning of this how I mentioned that David had predicted that Arnie was going to kill Debbie's boss, Alan? Well, like I said, Arnie snaps and he does that. He has a five inch pocket knife with him and he takes that and stabs Alan 20 times, mostly in the chest, and kills Alan. And Arnie is found by the police a couple miles later just walking you know, in shock from what I understand. And of course they arrest him. And so this begun the first legal case ever in United States history where the defense, Arnie, said that the devil made him do it. And it went on with the whole legal battle and the judge would not accept that at all and tossed that out. And so they went on like a self-defense type of thing that he was just defending Mary and that's why he snapped and went ahead and killed Alan. So that's pretty much the story. The Warrens even came to his defense for the trial, but Arnie did get sentenced to 10 to 20 years for the murder of Alan Bono. He got out in five years on good behavior. Debbie swears that he was possessed and that the devil did make him do it. And Debbie, as soon as he got out, Debbie and Arnie got married. Arnie, I guess, is doing better. Uh, David's doing well and everything worked out. I don't know why Arnie never got an exorcism though. Uh, so yeah, so there's a lot missing here. Kind of crazy. Now I tried to buy the book, The Devil Made Me Do It, uh, written by Ed and Lorraine Warren. And that book's like a couple hundred dollars or something ridiculous. Or some, some of them are like a thousand, it's ridiculous. So I just went through and found every article and everything I could on this for you guys. And if you know some of these missing pieces and, and have some answers to some of the missing pieces here, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. So make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this story. Let me know, what do you think? You think the devil made him do it? 
kind of crazy. Are you excited to see the movie? I'm still going to be there. I hope you guys are going to be there too. I hope you all are doing well. In the meantime though, if you could, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button for me. Helps this channel out a ton. We want to grow, get more cool stories out to everyone. And it just helps me do what I do. So, I hope everyone's great. I love y'all. And I will be talking to you soon. Bye.